What is going on, boys and girls, on this lovely Saturday afternoon? Today, we're going to talk about the future and how there's a million and one ways to make money online, or a million and one ways to make money, but we're going to talk about how to do it online. This is a new thing that I've got going on. First and foremost, welcome to the show. And this is your host, Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. We're going to talk about a few things, and I'm going to drop a few things. And that shouldn't have been up. But we're kind of going to go through a few days. It's flashing green and yellow. I wonder if this thing's going to hold. All right. We're still green. All right. Hopefully, we will have this with no issues. We're going to talk about how you can make money. I was talking to a friend this morning about some of the endeavors and stuff that I had going on. And we had discussed how there are many people that are in a certain place and they need help to get this. This is just crazy. They need help to get to a certain place and they don't need all of the um, riffraff. Like I give you an example, the new channel, the new men's channel, we will not be talking about alpha and beta. And the reason is most people already know where they are. They just want help to get to where they want to be. And the alpha, the dominant, that, that, that kind of gets in the way because then the conversation moves over to what's this, who's this, who's that versus getting into things that's going to like make these people more effective. You know, you're over here. You want to get to here. What's going to what steps you need to take here, here and here to get you here. And that's what we're going to discuss. One of the reasons I'm talking about that is it is my opinion. Everything's moving online. However, there's a million and one ways you can make money. There's so many ways you can make money. But what I will be talking about is how to make money online, because that's something I've been doing almost 20 years. From with various iterations of eBay, Amazon, Craigslist. I've been making a lot of money online for years. So that's what we're going to focus on. So with that, let's go here. All right. There's a lot of people who've been asking under the video, not in the comment sections, because YouTube has jacked up the comment section, is a link to every course that's for sale. Everything is in the description box under the video. You can buy bundles like this is the hands down the best bundle for hustling. Includes resale, includes Craigslist, includes storage auction, includes YouTube, and includes Craigslist hustles. All of that's in there. Or if you you don't have 500 bucks, and many people don't, then you can go below and just buy a course at a time. I would recommend 30 days to 2500 so that's that. And then we will get into this. All right. So now I have that's hustle camp. All right. I have this deal. Everyone who buys this deal, you get side hustle university plus more. You get everything. You get the art of holding. You get all the side hustles and you get one year at money income and profit dot com which would also include this course plus a lot more. So that's how that goes. And this is the current course that is for sale. The framework, how to start an online business in any niche. Let's talk about that. Many people are very helpful with one specific thing. Uh, many people are like, Hey, I want to do Facebook. Let me go to a Facebook expert. I want to do YouTube. Let me go to a YouTube expert. I want to do Shopify. Let me go to a Shopify expert. I want to do drop shipping. Let me go to a drop shipping expert. That works very well. However, there's many limitations. Facebook is always changing the algorithm. I know several, several people who used to do Facebook marketing for other people who are no longer doing it. I know several people who were drop shipping who are no longer doing it. I know several people who were trying to advise people on how to do YouTube and they're no longer doing it. 
when you create a specific course for a specific thing, it has an expiration date. The information could be rock solid. They could be very helpful. So if you see someone that's putting out a course and they just put it out, you need to go ahead and get on that now because if you wait, it's going to change. I mean, literally six months could be the difference. And I say that because what separates my course from all these other courses is my course is backed by almost 20 years of business experience. You, you've seen it. I'm not all over social media. Remember when Periscope came out? Did I jump to Periscope? Did I jump to Meerkat? I, did I jump to Blab? Anyone remember Blab? All of these sites like, hey, get on them, carve out some real estate space. And I'm just like, those are tactics tactical what i do is operate in principles tactics can expire principle law of gravity is a principle if you fall off a building in the building is three or four stories you may die or at least you're gonna break some bones because of the law of gravity the law of gravity does not change i don't care how old you get i don't care what comes on the market if i pick this cup up here and I let it go, it's going to fall on the floor. That's a principle. Principles do not change. Tactics often do. Now, a tactic can last for a while. A tactic can last for a few years. When I came out with my first book, uh, Making Money A to Z with self storage and Auctions, there was a there was some tactics in there, but the reason the book was so successful was it was grounded in business principles. So that's what's going to separate me because I get many people like, how do you compare against such and such? Um, show me such and such track record of having a business for 20 years. You can see 10 years of my journey here on YouTube. Show me their track records, because when someone says, hey, is this like. I don't really know because I didn't take that person's course and I'm not one to like say, oh, it's crap. It, I don't know. I'm going to say more likely it's very good because I don't know and I'm not going to spend money and I'm not going to buy it. And I'm not going to evaluate it. I'm going to stay in my lane, which is results and experience. You've seen the people in the chat. They bought courses. They like courses. They made money. That's what I love. One of the reasons that I've decided to focus online, and it's kind of, uh, I'm a little late to my own party, is that's how I've made the bulk of my money outside of being an outside salesperson. Most of my money has come from a heavy, like right now, I'm 100% online. When I was in the storage auction business, 70% of our profits came from online. We did split it because at one point it was mostly eBay and then we started to split it because about 38% of our profits were coming from Craigslist and 35% was coming from eBay then I think 20% because it was 38 let's see 32 70 20% yeah about 20% was coming from Amazon and the other money was coming from the the upscale garage sale physical sales on the weekend so your income has to be diversified. Uh, I know there are many people who have like pushed all the chips to the table and they all in on Amazon. And if they can get in and get out unscathed, congratulations, you've achieved something. Because I personally know 15 people who did the Amazon thing and they all got burned. And I'm not talking about the I know folks who are making two million a month. I know folks who are making three or four or five million a year. And it seems right now that the, the category or the target they're going after are people between that three and $10 million mark. And literally one dude woke up, he was out of business. All his inventory was at Amazon. He tried to get his account back. He hired people and he didn't know how to do anything other than Amazon. So he just became an Amazon consultant. He didn't know how to do anything else. Which brings me to a point. Once you go through this online, how to start an online business course, let me say the full name, the framework, how to start an online business in any niche, the framework, how to start an online business in any niche. 
I don't care if you're selling coolers. I don't care if you're selling handkerchiefs. I don't care if you're selling tea cakes. All these businesses have certain things in common. Once you get into the manufacturing of certain things, it gets different. But whatever you're selling, you need an audience or a marketplace. I don't care what it is. You can't get around that. Um, I was having a fight. Well, presume fight a beef with someone because he said, I said, if you're selling online courses, your success is 90 percent marketing. And he had put in some in there like, you know, the difference between successful courses and that is you know, learning how to run ads or paying someone to run ads. And I, I really agree with that. Then he wanted to get weird because it, it's always this esoteric thing. And then I guess he checked me out and he got silent. He said nothing else because I was getting ready to dig into him. I can tell because, you know, he put up a number and I didn't really go to his Facebook page. I didn't look at his business. I have no clue. And I'm not going to, but. I can tell how much some money someone's making by looking at their business because he said five million. He's got at least a 10 to 10 to 15 people. If he's making that has to have it has to have it. You can do one or almost two with I got three people working with me. You're going to have some people this whole notion of you just going to run ass by yourself and you no, 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 that ain't going to happen. Which kind of brings me to the process of why the course is structured this way. And also something else, too. I think it's going to show up. Hold on. Uh, I'm doing this one very different. All right. So let me hit refresh. So this is what we're going to do. Aha. Uh -huh, and it, it ain't in there. I don't know what it is with uh, Teachable but it will be in here. Hold on. All right. I, I just don't know why they do that. All right. So these are the webinars. <laughs> I know that should be the fourth webinar. Hold on. Look, I, this, this is weird. Fourth webinar and it should be, yeah. Fourth webinar, April. 16th so this is the 8 p.m. okay now we should be looking we should be cooking with gas all right so this is how we're going to fill out this course like right now all of this stuff is here and they're to the point pretty short but it's gonna take you a few weeks just to do this if you're really doing it. So you're going to sign up for the course, go to the modules and whatever questions that you have, you're going to write them down because I, I was going to do the webinar Sunday, but that didn't give people enough time to get ready. So you go through the course, you whatever questions you have, you write them down and then we'll address those questions Tuesday, the 26th. Then, but uh, tomorrow and Monday, there will be more content added to the framework. Then next week, same time, same date, 8 p.m., we're going to go over the new content. And we're just going to continue to do this because for me to do a webinar teaching you the stuff, it ain't enough. People need to go over the material two, sometimes three times. So you're going to make your first few passes over the information because it's already there. And then we're going to have a discussion about what issues you may have. So this is the next four webinars are already planned out. Um, also for the people who are in H undergrad, you should be signed up because uh, I've already got your webinar set up in income metamorphosis. So you can just go there, sign up, be there Tuesday. We'll rock and roll. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is this is going to be real education, real training. Because when I'm done with this course, it may be a thousand bucks. It'll be just that good. It may be that it may be two because we're going to get into the real things that make a business. I'm not going to talk about the flashy stuff. I'm not going to talk about you can get a house. I'm not going to talk about the Lambo and all those stuff. 
I'm going to talk about the solid principles that you can deploy and make money. That's what we're going to be talking about. And it ain't for everybody. I totally get that. If you're in an economic situation, just go below, get one of the single courses. They're like from $29 up to $149. That's the most expensive course, and that's 30 days to $2,500. Bucks. That course, 30 days to $2,500, should set you up very nicely because it's a very smaller version of what's going to happen with this because it's going to probably take a week, probably two weeks to get everything just for the audience. And the audience section is so important because if you do everything wrong, but you nail down your audience, you'll make a lot of money. If you do all the other stuff correct and you never identify or target your audience correctly, you're going to make little money into no money. These just be facts, as they say out here in these internet streets. All right. What's going on, Jay Preston, charlatan? Um, once again, what y'all going to have to do and I'm going to keep saying this. You're going to have to get on the email list. YouTube is a hater. They're not going to send you a notification. Here's the thing. You may be subscribed to my channel, but you're YouTube's customer. And they can decide where you're going to go and where you're not going to go. I've been doing live streams for the last few days, and you've not been getting the notifications. The only way you're going to get these notifications, and this is also in the description, is to get on the YouTube email notification list. That's the only way you're going to get it. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, reparations? Agent J. Poole. Well, the thing is, if you watch enough, it'll, YouTube will start recommending this to you. What's going on, Nate S. Victor? Uh, Victor just there there's one issue with seems to be for some people cannot get in the 10 essential steps of hustling I go in there and it works fine for me so I put in a ticket to think of it because I can't figure it out because if I go there and I see it works and I'm like I don't know what the disconnect is what's up King Nick <laughs> you you did the right thing, Charlton. Anthony Johnson, that's why I'm teaching myself web development. I mean, we're going to get into it a little later, but everything is moving online, and we're going to talk about the demographics that come after us, the, the generations. Uh, I, I will get into that in a minute. What's up, Alice Harley? Thanks for the $5. Appreciate you. You're saving folks' financial lives. Superstar Customs, online drop shipping today is no different from what my mom did in the 80s through mail order. Online course is no different from tapes sold in the 70s. Tactic evolves, principles stay the same. Pretty much, what's up Black Caesar? Yeah, I mean, oh, I the old email list? Let me tell you what happened with that. I got rid of it because I had too many. I got, I got this folder on my desk called H... Uh, HKF losers. These are the people who got the free courses. Every time I send an email, 20 or 30, I'm like, take me off the list. Take me off the list. Stop sending me this information to change my life. Stop sending me this information to make money. I don't want to make money. I'm tired of listening to you, man. And I cannot use that old list because they're on it. And if I take it and put it in my new email client, I'm going to have like 1,500 people instantly jump off that's going to send a signal to my email client that this is a bad actor and they're going to lower my deliverability rates because of these yard birds that I tried to help out. I mean, it, it, it just irks me to no end. YouTube starting to resemble a bad 90s new haters on the block. Well, it's YouTube's business, man. They do what they want. Here's the thing. And after I get through with um the framework and some other stuff because i gotta do framework and i gotta finish up investing yourself i'm gonna do a youtube course but it's not gonna be like you know how to get a bunch of views it's gonna be how to get engagement how to make money 
because right now there's a conversation that, you know, there's, there's people, they're getting like millions of views per month. They don't make a tenth of what I make. And they're getting millions of views per month because their channels are not set up to make money. Their channels are set up for the YouTube algorithm, but it's not set up to make life-changing money. And unless you do certain things, because I, I don't even say anything. I was like, yeah, I know exactly what's wrong with your channel. I ain't saying a word. You know why? Because I'm getting tired of getting beat up for telling people the truth. They weren't ready to hear it. Now they kind of ready to hear it. And I'm just not interested in sharing. I don't know what's going on with that. So I got a ticket in for them. All right. So let's talk about the demographics. And this is very important. How many of y'all have dogs? Millennials. In the generation behind them, let me actually bring those up. What is the generation behind millennials? No. No, I don't want before. I want behind millennials. People be searching for stuff like in ways that I just don't understand. All right. Generation Z. So let's bring this up on the screen. Uh, we have a dog whose dog food is like 150 bucks for a big bag that lasts, I think, two months. Millennials and um, Generation Z. Let me put this. Hold on a second. Let me put this where it needs to be. Here we go. Millennials and Generation Z are changing how business is done. And because of their buying habits, they're putting businesses out of business. Uh, there was an article that I shared. Uh, and I, I know I know it to be true because I live in one of those neighborhoods. And I'm going to tell you. People are not buying big houses. This is something else. Uh, hold on. Let's see. People are not. I think this was in the Wall Street. Wall Street Journal. A growing problem in real estate. Too many big houses. Um, I'm in one of those neighborhoods where we have, I mean, we got mansions. I mean, they're, they're literally mansions on acres. And I've noticed something because I've been studying the real estate market quite a bit because I'm getting into it. And for these houses, there are like literally mansions around the corner that have been sitting and, they can, and they've been trying to sell these houses for three and four and five years. Here's the problem. Say you are a consumer with a budget for $1.5 million to buy a house. You're not going to want to buy a fixer upper in that price range. If you're that kind of person, you would just buy a lot and build straight up. Because uh, I know a lady named Leslie, she bought a house, a house. It was a decent house, but they bought the lot and they knocked the house down. They spent a million on that and they spent uh, another million building their dream home. Well, it's worth 3.5. So they went in with a million five equity and their house is already paid for. So people with that type of bread are not interested in fixer uppers. If it's someone who's an investor who can get the price of that house really cheap. Yeah, but people are not buying these big old houses that many baby boomers built. And I'm going to tell you why. A lot of these houses have no character. They just built these houses. Like one of the things I like about my neighborhood and my section, every house is different. Every house on this street is different. No houses are similar. Uh, some are bigger than others. There's a lot of character in the neighborhood. The neighborhood's a little mature. Uh, trees are blooming and stuff. And two houses recently sold and one house, they had redone it down to the studs. They had renovated it to the studs and it looked like a brand new house on the inside and that's why it sold so fast. Because they just moved in and they didn't have to do anything but 
this is and this is why demographics are so important and this is why you got to figure out if your market is growing or where, wherever your market is because there's a glut of big houses there's too many big houses there's not enough people who can buy all these houses or want to even if they have the money uh, many people millennials and generation z are not interested in these houses just ain't ain't feeling it they ain't feeling it man Uh, engagement is powerful. Pay for views is dead. Gen Z. Black Caesar. Yeah, because this is one of the things you're getting in my course. You're getting experience. You're not getting something that maybe this will work. You're getting something that if you do it, it will work. Uh, Victor. Uh, just do it here because th this is one of the issues. I got everybody that wants to talk to me one on one. I really don't have time. And then people email Vanessa and then she kind of gets back to him because I got her working on the project. Because one of the reasons is I've explained it very carefully. And this is why I've like eased up on the pricing and stuff. Um, so just, you know, whatever issue you have, just go ahead and say it in the comments while I'm here. Charlotte, build a tribe, lead a tribe. I don't know what's happening because it works for me. Nate S, uh, in my area, lofts and condos is the wave. Really? Rock and roll diva, you want an acre? Your hustle is done on the pavement, short change. Um, Black Seeds of the Millennials. The millennials and Generation Z are being paid wages that are exceptionally high, yet many of them cannot keep a job, but they always come up with money to pay for an experience. That's interesting. Uh, Joanne, hey, bro, would you recommend someone use LegalZoom to set up a holding company? Let's talk about that because uh, a lot of people are into the LegalZoom thing. LegalZoom will do an excellent service of setting up you one holding company or one LLC. Here's the thing. You got to set up a strategy. And they don't do that. That's why I charge so much. You got to set up a tax strategy. Uh, we were having this conversation, me and us were friends who make more money than I do. And we we're always like, yeah, once you get past 200K, 401Ks don't work. Roth RAs don't work. They have contribution limits. And once you exceed those limits, it's, it's just like... What are we doing here? Matt Gershom, how much of the course is built out right now? I'm looking to purchase it today. Enough to keep you busy for the next three weeks. See, I'm not putting stuff in. This is a good question. I'm not just kind of putting stuff in there. I'm putting the stuff in there you need while trying to keep it tight as possible. I'm not going to do hour long videos like I did with uh, 30 days to 2500. Uh, the information is good, but people, that's just too much. Uh, I try to keep it between six minutes and 20 minutes per session and just give you the nitty gritty. Because the first section, you got to do a lot of research. And this is the part that so many people don't want to do. They're like, research for a week and let's get started making money. The better your research, the most, the more money you're going to make. I mean, it, it's just the reality of it. Because let's talk about audience building. It is very hard to build a long-term audience very quickly. You can build a large audience through paid traffic and proper keywording and, you know, having sales techniques embedded in your video. You can build an office very on audience very quickly doing that and when i say quickly three months <laughs> that's quick that's real quick i know someone that built a hundred thousand person email list in three months but it was a kind of a burn and churn it's like you know they spent i think 100k to get that list and their product was expensive the product was a g so once they sold a hundred 
they got all their money back from the testing and the ads and stuff. And then they were very profitable, but it was a very high ticket item. Building an audience is not something you can do fast. And once again, if you, you're in a situation where you, you need money, you know, if this 250 you let go, you got to get it back in two weeks. Do not buy this course. This course is not for you. Because you're going to spend two to three months just researching and doing your audience work because it's that important. I had a product when I did my Craigslist, uh, Pippin Craigslist webinars. I made $80,000 off a 350 person email list for that. Everybody on that list bought that product. That's just how powerful your audience research and development is. If you get a tight audience, you don't need hundreds of thousands of people on your email list. You can make, you can have an email list of two or 3000 people and make six figures to seven figures. If it's dialed in correctly, which takes time because you can ask people, it's like, Hey, what do you need? What, you know, you see this on Facebook all the time. What is the biggest problem you have in your business today? Cause they're trying to pitch you something. It's like, they want you to tell them what your problem is. But here's the thing. Many people will say that their problem is X, but their problem is really S. And then they'll try to create some kind of product to solve that pain. But when you get into dealing with seasoned business people, that stuff does just, just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It'll work on a noob, but it won't work on a seasoned business person. Maximin Augustine, how do you feel about putting your broke friends on to make money? If they got a good work ethic, I don't see no problem with it. But if they want to move immediately into management, <laughs> that's a bad idea. Uh, the numbers, if you already have an LLC already and pay you to set up a holding company, here's the whole thing with the holding company. There are many people who already have LLCs and they want to kind of, you can do it, but it gets tricky because you have to then, let's say you have an LLC, it's five years old. Then you create this brand new holding company. You got to sell that new holding company has to acquire that LLC. There's got to be paperwork on that acquirement. And just to me, if the company's not making a lot of money, it's just better to start over to me, because once you start selling companies, like let's say you sell your company to someone else that could trigger where your bank wants to see the new officers names like uh, chase bank. If you have an LLC with partners, they will not open up an account for you unless all of the partners come in and sign the paperwork. And I know why they do that, because people have stolen money they shouldn't have sold, and then people have gone after Chase. Butte Wing is selling a legit email list, a thing with good leads. How much would you sell a copy? I would never sell my email list. That's a good question. It used to be people, when we would buy leads, they were burnt out and crappy. I would never sell my email list. Because one, I'm an ethical person. Like the email list I got rid of, uh, it had like, I would say 70, 80% of it was crap. It was garbage because it was these free people who got the free courses. So that email list wasn't even worth selling. And then on the second part, if I build a proper email list, which is what I'm doing now, I'm not selling that because I can make more money using that email list and selling it to somebody. Uh, building the email list. Uh, typically, in my opinion, there are many people who are selling email lists and they're garbage. They just, I mean, you, you, you might be lucky just to get your money back that you paid for the list. Black Caesar, you got Black Caesar cracking up over here. You got to ask yourself, why are people broke? Because in this country, Yes, we have issues. Yes, kids have student loan debts. Um, there's so much opportunity right now. Is it because people just don't have knowledge? Because here on the Google machine, and this is why I keep making this point, like, okay, 
if all of this free information is so great, why are so many people so poor? Would you not take this free information and apply it to your life and make some more money? Why aren't people doing that? What's up, Mentor Shelley? So that, that's a big part of it. But going back to why we're doing this online business the way that I'm doing it, you're going to have to get into the demographics. You're going to have to know, like, let's say, let's say you were selling tea, a new kind of green tea, green tea, uh, millennials, Generation Z. They're very much about health. They're very much about antioxidants. They're very much about not drinking out of BPH bottles. So if you have a green product, you have a lot of audience. But wait a minute, you're selling tea. What kind of tea are you selling? Are you selling tea to vegans? Because vegans are going to want to know, is there any meat products in this? I mean, it gets so specific just on tea. And you once again, you got to figure out like, okay, I have this tea. Who am I going to sell it to and who's more likely to buy it? And that's going, you got to do research. You're just not going to get away without doing that research. D Grant, thanks for the 20 bucks. Thanks for all this game. Uncle G, I'm 28 with no kids, no wife. 16K saved up, but I just don't have a clue to what kind of business I want to start. Uh, D Grant, what you should do is start a service business. Keep your 16K in the bank and find a business that you like, car, whatever, and start off there. Because once you get into business, other doors open up. I've had a lot of friends who started businesses and they, because they were in business, they met people who were in business and they started doing something else. But if they never started that first business venture, they never would have got to the second thing. Because you, you, you got to get started on something. If you don't know what, just say, Write out a list of five things you like to do and see if you can make money with them. Uh, been the bartender. Why buy a bunch of emails when they aren't directly related to your product service? I don't understand. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't understand that. Because that's a good point, Ben. Marketing is so targeted now. Facebook ads can target people to income. I mean, they can really do pinpoint marketing. But what's funny is when you use Google and YouTube, you can get bigger ticket sales. So Facebook has the better targeting, but Google and YouTube has the higher ticket sales. It's very interesting. What's up, Christian? Jay Preston, thanks for the $5 super chat. So the demographics are everything. They they are. So let's let's kind of go back to this. So how many of you were like 40 something, 50 something? The dream was to get a big house, get you some acres, right? Let me show you the new dream. This is the new dream. This is what people are buying like crack. And because they're, they're just not a lot of them, people are building them. I plan on building one. This is what people are buying. The houses are tasteful and because they're modern, they're being built onto the property in a way that it doesn't stir trees and stuff. This is a bad boy right there. So this is the new dream. This is what a lot of millennials and Generation G's are, are buying. Uh, there's a lot of channels on YouTube that talk about architecture and stuff. Just watch that. And you will see that people are spending crazy money on these places. And also, this is the thing. And this is more, more about income than anything. This is a real thing. Uh, people are living in these little houses. They can build them for 15 to 30 K. And <laughs> some of them are movable. 
this is an all wet this is an all industrial countries now this is just not going to work for me because I have a lot of requirements that require space like this right here what if you gotta use the bathroom really bad and you gotta hop out of that no 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 and that's something else too about living in vans and all this other stuff but this is a thing now with tiny houses and houses with less uh, footprint you need less furniture you need less of everything and this is what's going on back to the dog food many of the older brands how millennials we, we don't care about that <laughs> Millennials are treating ch pets like their firstborn child and it's causing problems for some of the best known pet food brands. They're changing the organic. I mean, this is this stuff. If you're, you're, you're going to try to create products for people, you have to look at and let's see, do I have my phone? Let me see if I can find this book. You really have to, if you want to be successful in business, you need to become a data junkie. You need to um, spend a lot of time analyzing stuff. Because I'm going to put it up on the screen once I can find it. Hopefully, I'm still signed in. Cool. All right. So, I'm going to put this on the screen. I want everyone to get this book. Okay. Really? All righty then. Let's just go to Amazon. That's very interesting. Books. You know, I haven't bought a physical book in uh, like three or four years. I used to still buy them. Okay, what? <laughs> All right, here it is. I want everybody to get this book. Either get the ebook. I don't know if it's an uh, well, yeah, I think it is. It's an audible book. And listen to this five or six times because he talks about how. How many people remember the Suzuki, you know, rockets, those super fast bikes? They ran into a problem trying to sell those bikes because the people who were buying them aged out of them. They were getting married. They were developing families. The wife's like, you know, I want you. I want my husband to live. So you just like now, you know, you'll still see biker clubs on the road, but there's nothing compared to the biker clubs I used to see as a kid. They were everywhere. Just not as many of them. But go ahead and get this book. And really start beginning into becoming a data scientist. Because I'm going to say something that I don't think I've ever said before. When you nail down your audience, you can do everything wrong and still make a lot of money. That's how important it is. You can literally do everything wrong and still make a lot of money. Let's see. Um, Joanne, YouTube just messed up with me. Anyway, you're extremely good at making money. Just saw your, your payments for chatting. <laughs> um, I would say... If you're just going to build one holding company, you can just pay somebody for that. But if you're going to like really grow your business, um, 
It will be expensive, but it'll be worth it. You think you like the older homes better? I hear a lot of people say that. Excalibur, I've seen an entire neighborhood filled with these little houses. That's going to be a future trend, man. Uh, Joanne, I don't, this is how I do it. I don't sup your LLC. I teach you how to do it and you fill out the paperwork and stuff. Doom is Facebook is a sniper rifle. Google and YouTube is a shotgun. Um, they're getting better. So I, I, I can't really fully disagree with that. Oh yeah. The shipping crate houses. That's the thing. That's a big thing. Black suit. Who's gonna live in those little house like somewhere? Man, let let me show y'all something. You 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 think you think I'm kidding? Hold on a second. YouTube. All right. Who's gonna live in those tiny houses? Plenty of people. There's a whole section of YouTube that's devoted to people living in vans. One month van expenses. Uh, this is a couple that lives in a van. She lives in the van. Hippies are coming back, man. Hippies are making a comeback. These folks are the modern day hippies. That's who they are. And at some point, they're going to get tired of living like a nomad and living in the van. The stress of living in the van full time. And I want you to look. Look at the views of all these videos. There's a lot of people who are considering moving, living in their car, living in their van, buying something. Because, as Jimmy McMillan says, rent's too damn high. This is a this is a big thing. Just Google, and look, two point four. I mean, this has been going on a while. Living in a van with a toddler. Uh, don't know about that one. And they've got 431,000 subscribers. Now, here's something that's very interesting. If you've got those kind of subscribers, because I would say um, they're probably making five or 6,000 a month from YouTube. You can easily live in the van with that kind of income coming in. We live in a tiny home, looks like a van. They just put this up a month ago. 315 subscriber, 5,000 views. This is a very hot demographic. Uh, this one couple, let's see, rolling a, rolling along, is that it? Uh, couple lives in a school bus. They should be in here. Uh, Wander bus. And notice that they're all like this one living in a tiny house. Cosmopolitan's picked up on it. Tiny house tours. I think roll with it. Yeah. Uh, they dot. They bought a van. And they documented the whole, they bought the school bus, they documented, they converted the whole process. Part of it is she's got a big rack and they, 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 they prominently show her girls, but that's the, this got what? 23,000 uh, views. They have a really good presentation. They have really good, uh, work.
So this is what they do, man. I think this was. And the channel isn't that old. I think it's just two years old. So they bought it and they show how they were converting it. And you know that this this is huge. So for anyone who's saying who go live in these houses, you got a lot of people living in a car, living in a van, tiny house. That would be a step up for these people. Let's see. Uh Hold on. Yep, I mean, th that's what I'm saying. Everybody go out and get that book. All right, Faco Fix. What's up, Lamo? Appreciate it. Uh, Matt Gresham. No, no. L let me go ahead and pop out of this. Once I finish, the, the framework is just going to be like, do this, do this to research your audience, what you need to do the sub payment systems. That's it. The YouTube thing is going to be a totally different animal. There will be no YouTube training in how to start an internet business. Uh, I'm going to probably set up a whole different thing because uh, it's going to be pretty extensive. I haven't done it in a while, but I'm going to start doing videos with uh, 16 steps for sales process. It, it will be totally different. So, no. Here's the problem with forming an LLC in Wyoming, Montana, New Mexico. If you have a physical business where you have to do banking, like you, know, you can't. You can't scan a check for most banks for greater than twenty five hundred. And I think a few do five thousand. If your check is larger than that, you got to deposit that in the bank. So let's say you went to Montana or Wyoming, you created your LLC, but you're doing business in Texas. The minute that you have to get into banking or some other things, they're going to make you file as a foreign entity. And whatever reason that you went to Wyoming disappears, it, it goes away. It's like, OK, that ain't going to work. So, but you start an online business where you just got PayPal and Stripe. Yeah, you can do a lot. That, that's a hint there. What's up? Yeah, couples living in vans. I'm like, see, remember when I used to bring y'all all this esoteric stuff? Remember in 2013 when I said the cuddle business was going to blow up and y'all thought I was crazy? All right, CN. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to watch older videos. I think that's the algorithm doing stuff. Flaco Fix has happened to me owning business just being 21 years old, all coming down from nothing. I will tell you if I was the people who, with your videos, that all advice and lesson you give them for free. These, <laughs> these people are no man. Gypsies, man. Gypsies and hippies are making a comeback. Matt Gresham, I help <clears throat> social media marketing agencies owners get clients because of the rise of the gig economy. I'm thinking about going broader with my services because a lot of other people need help with getting clients. Also, Flaco, awesome. The minimalist movement is beyond trendy. The minimalist movement has come by because these folks can't make no money. A lot of people didn't become minimalist because it's like, I need to declutter myself. I don't really have a lot of stuff. I mean, I, we, you know, it would take a moving truck to get everything out of here. But um, I have more stuff. It, it, it's a money thing. It's not a spiritual thing. For some people, it's spiritual. But for most of these folks, it's a money thing. It's all about the Benjamins.
Coach G, you just explained the reason why they're like three or four vans that are permanently parked in the Planet Fitness lot. Dude, Planet Fitness, when you get on these forums, Planet Fitness, 24-hour fitness, this is where a lot of these people take showers. Absolutely. Uh, Walmart parking lot is friendly to some of these people, or they were. Oh, Joanne, thank you. But yeah, the people hate. People hate. D. Grin, I work as a mechanic at a shop in Buckhead. I see rich people spend thousands of dollars with us and not blink an eye. Every day I get to expose to how rich people really live their lives. Thank you for saying that. Because there's this, I think there's this fantasy that many people tell themselves so they can feel better about their position. Because uh, when I did my video, the rich people of Atlanta, I live in this neighborhood. They ain't driving Hondas around here. Uh, when I go out the neighborhood and I, I get up on Mount Vernon, I see Ferraris. I see Porsche GT3. That's a $200,000 plus sports car. I see Lexuses. I see... There, there's not a lot of Hondas and Toyotas around here, aka the millionaire next door. That's funny. Sure, Earl Nine Grill's the man, man. He is the man. Shout out to Pin, uh, to uh, Minimalist. I mean, it's a funny thing, right? Because minimalist, it's all about the money for most people. Once again, there's some people who spiritually feel it, but they always talk about not spending money on stuff they don't need. Uh, they talk about not getting validation from buying new clothes, not having, it's, it's all money focused. It's all money focused. But the demos, you know, getting back to uh, the framework. The demos are super, super important. And this is what you're looking at. You go through the course and you start doing research. Now, for most folks, not used to doing research. And it's going to feel odd. And it's like, okay, I'm doing this research because one of the big things you're going to have to make a break from is I do all this hard work. Then we'll get instantly paid at the end of this hard work. It does not work like that. I worked on this channel for six months without making a dime. And people were like, is this YouTube thing going to work out for you? I was like, yeah, I think so. I, I'm so glad I started when I did. And this is what you're going to do. And this is why you keep your job. Because you're going to need money to live on. And you do this research during your lunch hour. I, I, it's, it's so critical. Dumas grew up in the wrong age. Back then, women just called me cheap. <laughs> M. Sway, the good thing about millennials, they don't say millennials forever. Sometimes they will have to grow up. And that's a very good point because the guy who wrote the book Upside, he talked about that. You know, they were talking about these millennials and stuff. And he said, this has happened before. And he said, really? Remember the hippies? And the guy's like, oh, yeah. And who are the hippies now? There are doctors, attorneys, judges, mayors, senators, presidents. These millennials are just in their hippie phase. They're going to grow out of it. I've seen many people, like there was this one couple, uh, they, they, they have, uh, they just got a permanent location because they've been on the road six years. They bought some property and that's their, their home base, so to speak. And I guarantee you, in four to five years, they're going to come off the road. As you grow up, like, there's a whole bunch of people that are trying to get into the military now. Hold on. <coughs> uh, because of money. They're trying to get into the military because they need some money because things aren't working out here. Let me tell you what happened to me. I joined the military. I graduated June 5th. June 7th, I was gone. 
because they was like, hey, you want to take the summer? I was like, no, nah, let's might as well get this over with. So I went and did my basic training during the summer of 85. I lost 25 pounds in basic training. That's how hard they were running us. When I got to Hawaii, which was infantry, we used to run from the Med Battalion up to Koli Koli Pass. is where the cross is in Hawaii. And that's where the Japanese came in when they bombed Pearl Harbor. 6.5 miles. We did that every day. Um, I, I, I'm like, this is, you know, going into the military, living in the van, wandering around. This is some stuff you do when you're young. Because as you grow older, certain parts of your personality are just going to change. You're literally not going to be the same person at 35 that you were at 25. You're just not. And a lot of this stuff, you're going to want to start nesting. You're going to want to have a permanent place. Um, like I said, it's cool when you're young. But you get older and then you get kids and you, you because the thing is, the kids are going to have a very weird upbringing. And that's usually what brings people home because their kids, you're always wrong. How are your kids going to develop friends? How are they going to put down roots? So it gets to be very interesting. Black Caesar Glenn, I'm starting to think you're on the new millennium. Nostradamus, because you've been on point. Bitcoin failed. <laughs> Man, that was easy to see. There ain't nothing behind it. I mean, there's a lot of hope behind it. There's a lot of enthusiasm behind it. There's a lot of wishing. But materially, there's just nothing behind it. It's like vapor money. You remember the whisper rooms and the boiler rooms for stock tips and stuff back in the day? That's pretty much what it is. Thank you, Black. Well, the, the, one of the things is when I'm right, a lot of people refuse to give me credit, and I'm cool with that because, you know, being right is worth it, everything. And you remember the crap I took for saying that Bitcoin was going to fail and you shouldn't invest in it, and I sold my Bitcoin. Everybody was ribbing me. But once again, I asked a question, who's going to buy Bitcoin? And this is something else, too. I'm going to pop this up here because this is going to um, <laughs> this. This just came Bitcoin trading. This just came out, I think, today. Majority of Bitcoin trading is a hoax. New study finds. 95% of the spot Bitcoin trading volume is faked by unregulated exchange, according to a study from Bitwise this week. The firm analyzed the top 81 crypto exchanges by volume on the interest rate site, CoinMarketCap.com. The report an aggregated 6 billion average daily Bitcoin volume. The study finds that only 273 million of that is legitimate. People look at cryptocurrency and say this market's a mess. That's because they were looking at data that was manipulated. How often did I say that this stuff was manipulated? There's only a handful of people who own most of crypto and they just buy and sell amongst themselves to keep the price up. Hey, man, you know, I need to buy a new yacht. I need to get a new plane. Let's move some crypto around, raise the price. Because when you own, let's say you own a million shares of crypto, right? So you move the price up 100 bucks on the million shares. You know how much money that is? I, I don't even know how much money it is. I'm about to find out. So you have 1 million shares. Yeah. Times. Let's, let's, let's bring in $88. That's $88 million from 100, a 100, an 88, yeah, an $88 price increase. That's $88 million. See, they don't need Bitcoin to go to the moon. They don't need Bitcoin to... Um, go to 100k they just need mick because essentially what all these folks did is whatever principal and this is the money that they bought the original company bitcoin with they've already pulled that out they're just playing with market money this ain't even real to them but the profits and stuff is real and you know i i'm i'm through pissing people off 
because, like I said, I was right. <laughs> I was right. And, they, you know, it's, it's just the reality of it. But Bitcoin had a great promise, but it got prostituted by greedy people. Imagine working five cents an hour like prisons. Yeah, there's some people who are kind of close to that. The Grand Uncle G is definitely right. I've seen so many Porsche, Audi, Rolls Royces, Ferrari, Lambos. That's become from normal for me to see them. Yeah, these folks ain't out here driving no pickup truck. <laughs> but, you know, people keep saying that stuff. Awesome, charlatan. I would say being trans, it gets very old very quickly. No, I don't think hemp stocks going to be anything like Bitcoin. Weed is real. We weed is very real. That's real money. That's you now crypto, the, the weed market. Uh, that's going to be a growth industry. King Nick, that Bitcoin trading volume arc was 100% real. Several of those top exchanges are Chinese with all sort of wash uh, trading. I've seen it myself when looking through the order books and placing orders. It's been manipulated since day one because there's a lot of money. King Nick, yep, Wales can basically open a short position, dump 5,000 plus Bitcoins on exchange like BitMEX, uh, Bitfinex to multiply their money, then open long and market buy, rinse, wash, repeat. And that's what they've been doing. And for this Ponzi scheme to keep working, they need new people to come in. And that's why they've run into a problem because a lot of people like, there were people who, who mortgaged their house. There were people who took out credit card loans. There are people who took out actual loans to buy Bitcoin and they bought it at 16 and 18 K. And then they were like, listen to these fools. Well, just dollar cost average. And what that means is regardless if it goes up or down, you put 300 bucks in every month. So if from January of 2018 to December to 2018, if you dollar cost average, you lost money for the whole year. But Bitcoin is going to the moon. I agree 100% Steve Jameson. Thank you Flaco Fix. I've seen I'm I'm I've been seeing the repo man quite often in the community especially around locations where people were big on Bitcoin. Really? This this is something I don't understand. If you're making real money, why are you buy why are you getting cars with car notes? That just never never made any sense to me. Bitcoin was the classic tool of seeing. But, you know, let's look at the Bitcoin example and look at the real business. Let's say today you start your research and it takes you three months to research your, your concept out. Then you start putting product or service out. Then you start making money. If you stick with this, it's going to be hard the first one to five years. This just is. But year seven, year eight, like my friend who made the decision in 2008 to buy the building that her business was in, $7,000 a month mortgage. Um, she's got, 2008 is uh, 2019, she's got like seven more years. And that building would be paid off if she hadn't refinanced it. And it's going up in value. That one building could be her retirement. Good Lord, man, that Iraqi money. All right. So once again, for anybody that wants anything, everything is under the video because YouTube keeps messing with stuff. And tomorrow and Monday, I'll be adding new content to framework. And then Tuesday night, 8 p.m., everything's already set up. You buy framework. You can register for the webinar. Don't have to send you anything. You don't have to email me. And then um, we'll be good to go. And this is how I'm going to do it because it's already set up for the next four weeks. What's going to happen? So there it is. All right. So you guys go out and have a great Saturday. 
enjoy yourself, play around. It's getting warm, and I'll see you guys in the next live stream.